Hello, Internet. Um, so today was moving day. Um, there are, you can't see it, but there are boxes covering my entire living room. This is the new place, by the way. We, we just, um, we've just been moving for the last couple of weeks. Um, I haven't shaved. I, I feel like a mess. I'm tired. Um, you know, I still have to do the, the, the week of wild turkey stuff. And frankly, my, my, my mind is not there. Um, so I, I, but I wanted to make a video for the weekend. And so I just kind of went to my pile of stuff to the things that weren't covered in boxes, basically, and, and sort of furniture that came over. Um, and I pulled out a bunch of things that, um, I haven't reviewed yet, which I sort of have marked for taking notes on and also some things that I just had access to. Um, and I, th I thought a fun theme to do would be, uh, blank and Coke. Um, so, uh, mixing stuff with, with Coke, um, is not exactly the, the hottest thing going on in, um, mixology right now. Um, but you know, summer's coming up, warm weather's coming up. And, uh, also I happen to like Coke and I happen to have this around in the fridge. Um, uh, Coke is a pretty darn solid formula. It comes out best in the, the stuff coming out of Mexico, at least in the, if you're in the U.S. Um, but even the, the sort of uh, high fructose corn syrup stuff is pretty darn good. It, it's sweet, but it's not, you know, uh, at least to my palate, sort of stupidly sweet. And it's balanced off with a nice kind of bitterness from uh, the, the, the cocoa and the other stuff in there and, and a little bit of a, of a sour citric note. Um, so it's actually, you know, I mean, it's you no know, one of the biggest companies in the world and I should hate it, but I just don't, um, I like this stuff. I do think it's, it's great that, that, um, health wise, this is not the default anymore that folks are moving away from just having soda at a meal, you know, because, you know, for lack of anything else to drink, that's good. Uh, that is a good step. Um, I would love to see the soda industry involved more towards being an occasional thing, you know, witness the rise of Mexican, Mexican Coke, right? You know, you, you, uh, you just pop it, you know, buy one bottle every once in a while when you, when you want a Coke and you enjoy it very much. And, uh, you don't have to think about, you know, the other 11 cans or whatever in your fridge or it's just, it's just an occasional thing. And I would love to see more of that anyways. But today, uh, we are, we are going to have a big battle Royale between, uh, nine spirits plus a guest, um, over, uh, the question, what makes the best blank and Coke? Um, and I wanted to sort of narrow things down. Uh, I didn't want to go too, you know, cause that's, that's a lot of things if you're just including everything in the liquor store. So here are, here are my limiting, uh, factors it has to be under 30 bucks in my area. So Chicago. Um, it has to be bottled at 50% alcohol or higher because I want my rum and Coke or, you know, my whiskey and Coke or whatever it may be, uh, to be pretty darn strong. I don't want, you know, water getting in the way of the fun. Um, so those were my two requirements. Now, immediately that, that sort of basically cut out a couple of categories entirely. Um, scotch is pretty much entirely cut out malts as well as blends. Um, Ireland too, so far as I can tell, you know, basically the, the entire world of whiskey outside of, um, outside of America is kind of cut out with those rules. Uh, also agave based spirits. Those really only start to get, you know, start to pass, um, uh, those requirements. You know, once you're up into the 40, uh, it's, it's either strong or it's, or it's, uh, cheap. You can pick one of those two with agave. Um, so, but so I have, I do have some other things. All right. So we're going to go through the lineup. I do have a cheater at the end because I want to throw it in, but, um, the others obey those rules under 30 bucks must be bottled at 50% alcohol or, or over. So what have we got? Um, well, first I'm going to pop this. There we go. And what I'm going to do in a moment is um, add an ounce of this to each of these glasses, to which I have a half an ounce of my spirits. You know, uh, the the classical um, uh, Cuba Libre, 
recipe is I think five to 12 of spirit to Coke. We're gonna go a little bit, we're gonna make this simpler and just do one to two. Um, it also works better because these are stronger spirits than, than a traditional Cuba Libre or, or rum and coke and those things, so that sorts of things. So um, what do we got? We have got, well, I'm gonna move this back here for the moment to make room. Uh, first up, first glass. This is representing um, molasses-based rum. So traditionally in this you would use uh, a sort of Cuban style white rum. That is a, a, a rum that's been aged and then kind of de-aged in that weird filtering process that they do. Um, not a lot of those are bottled um, uh, at strong enough proof. You had Bacardi 151, but that, I haven't seen that in a while and I really wouldn't want to buy it. I don't want it on my shelf. Um, so this was my compromise. Uh, this is a blend of uh, uh, pot unaged pot still rum from Jamaica, Worthy Park, with uh, aged um, column distillate, I, I imagine mostly column distillate anyways, uh, from Diamond Distillery in Guyana. Um, it is bottled at a uh, honking strong 57% alcohol. Uh, again, Hamilton uh, 114 Navy Strength. I like this a lot in the review. And uh, this is my first, this is my, this is your sort of default rum and coke rum pick for me. Um, but then uh, I want to have some fun variations on the rum and coke. So I'm throwing in, as my second glass, Duquesne. Um, this is about $26 for a liter, so it is uh, quite inexpensive. The Hamilton, by the way, is about is almost 30 It's sort of the, among the priciest bottles here. Uh, this is only about 26 or so, and it's a big-ass bottle. Um, bottled at 50% alcohol. This is a Rum Agricole Blanc um, from uh, Martinique. Um, so we, we're using something made entirely from cane juice uh, on a traditional column still rather than a sort of big industrial thing. Um, this should be interesting. I, I imagine, I am thinking this will play really well with the sort of soury notes in the Coke, uh, but we will have to see. Um, uh, my third option, this should be fun. I wanted to throw in a wild card. <clears throat> Same benevolence, uh, Claren from Haiti. Um, this is, at the moment at least, the least expensive Claren you can buy. It is still bottled at 50% alcohol though. Um, it is uh, made entirely from uh, cane juice and a little bit of, and, and, and some cane syrup as well. Um, and uh, uh, pot distill this time, not column distill. Um, I like this a lot. It's it's not my favorite among the the Claren, the Clarens you can currently buy, but at the price they're asking, it doesn't need to be. I mean, this is very good stuff and a terrific value. Um, if you haven't if you haven't grabbed this, it is it is worth the grab. Uh, anyways, this is number three. I am very interested to see what the sort of herbal olivey nature in this does with Coke. That'll be fun. All right, so that is that completes my collection of cane-based spirits. Let's let's move on to um, some uh, grain-based spirits. Um, so uh, again, we're we're sort of leaving Scotland and really Canada as well, and uh, um, you know Ireland, pretty much the rest of the world out of this. It's it's just it's mostly just going to be the U.S. here. Um, so the first thing I would I would love to have gone to was would of course be the classic Jack and Coke, Jack Daniels. Unfortunately, Jack Daniels doesn't bottle um, anything strong enough at a cheap enough price range. Um, you cannot even get a anything from Tennessee, really, um, um, a Dickel and Coke uh, under their official label. Dickel or and and, um, and and Daniels haven't made a bottled in bond yet, sadly, even though they really should. Get on it, guys. Um, what you can get, at least in Chicago, is this. This is Jepson's Bourbon Single Barrel. It's a Binnie's pick. Um, now, so CH Distillery in, in Pilsen here in Chicago uh, acquired the Jepson's name, famous for Malort, right? The, the stuff that's sort of sixthly sweet and then covers your mouth in like um, newspaper and Advil for like, for like two hours. That stuff. Um, they've been trying to extend that brand because it's a very well-known brand. Um, and uh, what they've 
And so they came out with their own bourbon, and uh, of course, then they came up with the single barrels. Now, what the bourbon was, was they basically bought up a bunch of uh, stock from MGP and Dickel. And the single barrels are individually from MGP and Dickel. Now, I, I've tried the, um, uh, the MGP one. Uh, it was not my favorite, it's, um, but uh, the, this one is marked as from Tennessee. And just smelling it, I'm sorry, uh, that was my cork, uh, corkscrew uh, Coke popper falling. I mean, you, you immediately know this is Dickel. It just, the, the, the sort of children's vitamin note that is, is the sort of fruity minerality thing that Dickel does, it is very prominent on the nose. Um, Binnie's has bottled this at uh, a bunch of different strengths. I mean, I think there's some barrel proof ones. This one is 53.5% alcohol, 107 proof. That's good enough to get it in. It is also about $29. Um, so it is a bit of a value. The regular bourbon is also pretty good, actually. Um, not stunning, but if you're looking to spend, you know, something in the low 20s for a bottle of 100, you know, 100 proof bourbon, you could do a lot worse. Um, so that's the first grain thing, um, my first whiskey in, in my lineup. Second up, uh, someone's going to complain about Dickel, um, right? There's some Dickel haters out there, and I understand. I know where you're coming from. You're gonna, and you're going to say, no, the corn content is too high. Um, it has that weird Flintstone vitamin note. I, what, I, want, I want a real you know, corn-based spirit in my tasting. All right, I'm going to give you... Old Granddad 114, uh, bottled at 114 proof, 57% alcohol, same as the as the Hamilton. High rye content, uh, aged for I don't know enough. It's aged enough. Um, this is probably my favorite bourbon under 30 bucks. Uh, I th I think the world of it. So I'll, I am I am eager to see um, what this uh, what this will do with in a um, with. Uh, you know, a lot of Coke mixed into it. That sounds great to me. Um, and I'm especially eager to see the contrast between the Dickel and, uh, and um, the old granddad because the, the, the Dickel has that prominent uh, note to it, the sort of vitamin thing, uh, but the, uh, the old granddad is a little bit stronger and has that higher rye content. So who's gonna win on this? Um, and you know, to round out my whiskeys, uh, I have got Wild turkey, because I, you know, I've been promising wild turkey. Um, and I should th show, throw something in here about that. Um, but not the bourbon range. This is the rye. This is the 101 proof uh, wild turkey rye, bottle of 50.5% alcohol. This is glass number, what is this, a six. Um, I had a bunch of ryes lying around, and this is the one I decided to go with because w why not? I mean, it's, it's good. Um, it's young, it's very uh, distillate forward, and I like that. Um, I like that in my rise. So we will see what that does with Coke. Now, uh, um, uh, many of you who watched the, um, the thing I did with fortified beers might be saying at this point, well, why isn't there any Baijo here? Um, that's a, that's a grain-based spirit too, right? Um, uh, so, you know, you, you, and, and, it seems like it would be fun to see what a crazy, you know, stinky cheese and and um, black licorice bomb would do with Coke. Um, but unfortunately, the, the main candidate for something like that, uh, Ming River from Luso Lao Jiao Distillery in Sichuan, um, is a little bit too expensive. It's over 30 bucks, and it's not quite strong enough. It's only bottled at 45% alcohol. So unfortunately, I can't I can't do Ming River. I'm sorry. Uh, it, and that's why I went out and bought Luz, uh, Luzhao Lao Jiao um, Air Kuo Ju. This is the, one of the cheapest Baijos you can buy. Um, I spent somewhere in the low 20s on this in, in Chinatown in Chicago. Um, but I've seen it on the internet for the teens. Like this is, this is budget stuff. So, so this is uh, glass number seven, Baijo. And uh, I have absolutely no idea what Baijo and Coke is going to do, but it seems like it's, it's going to be fun. 80% um, uh, sorghum, 20% wheat. If this is aged, I doubt it is for very long. They age in clay, um, uh, of course. Um, 
52% uh, alcohol by, by volume, so it qualifies by price and by strength. <clears throat> and, um, <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> it's a terrific nose. Um, you have to you have to like your your black licorice, but man, if if you are a real kind of person, um, this is this is actually a little bit, a little bit of a value. I'll do a review. It's uh, pretty soon. Um, okay, moving away from grain based spirits, I also wanted to do a couple of brandies. Um, so glass number eight is it? I guess is um, Sacred Bond, Christian Brothers Sacred Bond by Heaven Hill. Um, a bottle, bottled in bond brandy, uh, four years old, aged in bourbon barrels. I really like this stuff. It is not, um, deep and profound, um, but it's a lovely brandy and a sort of terrific option for people looking for something a little bit different from, from bourbon, but in that same sort of, uh, or, you know, sweeter bourbons, like say Maker's Mark, or, or even like if you're a Diggle person. Um, this is, this is a great option to explore. Um, and I, I just want to give this some more press. And I really think this will work well with Coke. I think this will be a surprise. Um, last up in the official contestants, glass number nine is Laird's bottled in bond, straight apple brandy, uh, 50% alcohol, of course. Oh, and the same goes for the sacred bond. Everything bottled in bond is 50% alcohol. Um, uh, what can I say about this? It, it's a classic. Uh, you want to avoid the Applejack, avoid the Applejack at all costs, but, uh, do try out, uh, Laird's straight apple brandy at this age. Uh, and, uh, in this form, I think it's a little bit rough. It reminds me a little bit of, um, uh, young Calvados from the pie Dodge. Um, it's, it's just a little bit hairy at this age, but, uh, I suspect it will absolutely, uh, uh, do do wonders with some coke um and uh so that was my lineup my official lineup of nine spirits now i do have this extra one right here because i felt uh i, I wanted to throw in something a little bit fun for myself because it's moving day and i worked hard um so i wanted to throw in something that was not allowed by my own rules so this is not part of the contest but i want to see um how tequila will work with coke so i'm bringing out my beloved Tapatio uh, 110, the amazing um, uh, Highland tequila producer. Um, great value too. I mean, you can, this is a liter bottle. It's probably, I don't know. You can probably find it for less than 50 bucks where you are. Um, and the quality is, is terrific and it is very strong. So that's our lineup. Uh, this is a little bit of a, of a wild, not wild card. It's, it's, it's just for me. It's for fun. Um, these are the real contestants. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down the line and add an ounce of Coke to each. Oh, look at that. All right. There it goes in the Hamilton. And... Another ounce in the Duquesne. In the Claren. I imagine I'm going to be messed up by the time this video is over. All right, that was the, what was that? The, the Dickel, the, all right, so this is the OGD. And... Ounce in my turkey rye. God help us, an ounce in the baijo. And ounce in my sacred bond. Mm -mm. Ounce in my Laird's apple brandy. And finally, 
one last ounce in our guest and Coke, the Tapatio. It's just, I like this. It's, it's, I know I should hate it. I know I should be too cool for this, but it's, it's a good product, y'all. Um, okay. Let's get on the line. Let's see what we got. Ooh. Sorry. So what I did um, was uh, I rinsed my shot glass with um, with a little paper towel um, before I did that, and a little bit got caught in there. So I hope my Hamilton and Coke is not too tainted by the paper towel. Let's see. All right. So this is the. Uh, you know, what? I'm gonna put each bottle up as I do it. All right, Hamilton and Coke. Okay, this okay. This smells like a very good version of a rum and, of a traditional rum and Coke. So you're getting those those the the Coke is coming right through. It's accentuated. The vanilla is accentuated by the rum. There's a little bit of a citrus note. A little um. Uh, oh, what is that? Yeah, it's it's lime, but more like lime pith than 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 the zest or the fruit or the the pulp. I mean. And then the 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 the, uh, the pot distillate from the Worthy Park is also starting to creep through, adding a little funky character to this. If it was any more prominent, I would say it might be a little out of balance. But at at this at this strength, I think this is a good strength for this. Um, it's just a little hint of like a, a rose water and maybe like a banana peel in there, like like really. Um, Slightly rotty banana peel, but nice. It smells like a really nice rum and coke. And it is. That works. Um, okay, this has a, a lot of the problems that um, a normal rum, rum and coke has. Namely, it, it's begging for a little bit more sour. Um, the, 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 the sweetness... Is straightforward in my mouth, so I'm getting, you know, the 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 vanilla, the cola, um, a little bit of a of a nice kind of a leafy herbal touch in there. One more time. Yeah, that that sort of, and then the the floral banana peel note. Not even like the little strings you get in a banana peel. That's in here. Uh, coming from the pot distillate. What I really want is just a wedge of lime in here. Just throw something in here to give it a little more sour and it would be bounced off uh, terrifically. So um, it's a terrific rum and coke, but the rum and coke is also begging for, you know, a, even a really good rum and coke is just begging for more sour. So that's my only complaint on this. Let me try it one more time. I would drink this over ice in the summertime, but again, I would I would love a little sour in this. Um, good drink though. Moving on, uh, I'm gonna have a sip of water. The uh, what is this? Duquesne and Coke. Oh, I can smell it from the glass. Jesus. Okay, this smells like lime juice. It just does. Um, that is crazy. Um, wow. It's It just smelled... I mean, that is... 90% of this is just straight up, you know, you squeeze the lime and you sort of smell the juice um, in the glass. And it's terrific. I'm loving it. There's the, the Coke is creeping through a little bit. I'm getting a little bit of that, that the cola note. Um... A little bit of, of uh, a little bit of the alcohol is coming through too, which is not bad. Um, slight minerality, a little bit of like a like a sandstone note too. But the lime is just running all over this, um, and it makes me very happy. Actually, it makes. Um, let's see how it is.
damn it, I like this better. Um, yeah, I do. I like this better. So it's it's uh, it actually comes out a little bit more sweet than this one does, oddly enough. But something about the agricole is bringing in an, an additional sour element, and even a little bit of um, a kind of chalky astringency on the back end, which is balancing off the sweetness quite nicely. Yeah, lime all over the place, cane syrup, um, uh, kind of a sandstone-y thing again. Uh, vanilla again, cola again. It's just nice. Um, this even, okay, so this, has over the the Hamilton that I don't necessarily on its own this feels like a more balanced drink this feels like it would be if I gave this some lime juice I feel like it would, might come out on top over this but on their own you know this is this is for me for my palate clearly superior um, okay moving on to the Claren and Coke so right now the Rum Agricola and Coke is winning let's see what the Claren can do all right, what, what do we got here? Um, interesting is uh, the first word that comes to mind. So this, uh, oh, uh, this smells like I've just kind of mixed Coke in with um, olives and olive juice. Maybe it was a couple of pencil erasers thrown in there as well. Um, it's an unusual nose. It doesn't feel like it, it doesn't feel very balanced. Um, it feels like the, the, the ele two elements making this up are, are kind of fighting against each other. Like the, wait, I, I need to change my models. <sighs> no rehearsals. Yeah, it feels like the Claren and the Coke are kind of fighting against each other. It's it's like you know the olive is is push the olives are pushing one way and the Coke is pushing another way. Um, some of the same uh, kind of minerality from the Rome Agricole and Coke is coming out here. It just doesn't have that that lovely lush fruitiness to kind of to kind of back it up on the palate. Oh, yeah, that doesn't really work. Um, ooh, one more time. Ooh, yeah, that's um, that's not my favorite combination. Uh, so we're getting, you know, if you can imagine Coke mixed with, you know, olives and olive juice, we're getting that again. There's a little bit of a floral note in there too, which is kind of nice, but it just can't punch its way through those other elements enough to kind of make it work. Oh, um, okay. I was, so buy this, don't mix it with Coke. Um, don't mix it with just this with Coke. Uh, that, that is not the winner today. Moving on. All right, so we're gonna start on our grain-based spirits. Rums did pretty well. Hamilton is extremely solid. Duquesne is, is a couple of notches even above that. You know the Claren. We'll forget about the Claren, but um, uh, Rum is clearly showing some 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 power here, showing some moves. All right, let's start with our uh, uh, what do we got here? Jepson's Bourbon Single Barrel uh, from from Dickel. On the nose. Um, So believe it or not, the Dickel is actually winning in this. Like the like the uh, what's what's coming through is that sort of uh, minerally vitamin-y note. Um, yeah, Flintstones vitamins, a lot of that, and then the vanilla, and then the Coke is coming through with this. Sort of, we got the um, the vanilla, um, kind of a cola cube thing, obviously. 
Um, I'm kind of vague suggestions of um, of the the, the rye uh, character to this, but not very much. It smells. The booze is also coming through. The the heat, the alcohol is also coming through on this more so than it was on the previous ones, even though this is not nearly as strong as the Hamilton was. Yeah, it's 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 Flintstones of vitamins, sort of backed up by vanilla and cola and. Um, kind of a nice floral note too, um, you know, some, some geraniums in there, a couple of daisies. Let's see what this has got. Not bad. So back up, you have to like Dickel or put it, at least you, you, you have to not hate Dickel, um, in order to appreciate this. Um, Ooh, this is another one, kind of like the Hamilton, that feels like it needs some sour to balance it off. We need we need a wedge of lime or lemon or something in this to, to kind of ch chase away the, the cloying sweetness that this is generating right now, but it's not bad. Um, so it's a background of a kind of grainy Coke, Coca-Cola thing. Um, but through that background, the... The, the fruity minerality vit, Flintstones vitamin thing is, is coming through very loud and clear um, with a lot of character. And I kind of like it. It is not my favorite. It is, it is losing to all the rums except the Claren. Um, I do like this better than the Claren and Coke. Um, uh, but yeah, it's Dickel and Coke feels, um, feel, first of all, feels like it needs a little sour and also feels like it's... Um, it's just not bringing as much as some of the options here. Not bad though. Yeah, um, a little medicinal. You can cure that with a little sour though. Um, okay, moving on to glass number five. I'm gonna give, give it a little, cleanse my mouth a little bit. Um, okay, so this is the OGD. I have. I have high hopes here. This should uh, kick my butt. Here we go. Um, honestly, I'm not getting very much. Uh, um, honestly, most, most of what I'm getting is the alcohol, the heat, the extra heat coming through. It's not very nice. It honestly, it just smells like grainy Coke. Um, you know, you is is there some rye in here? Yeah, but it's it's like you you know you bought some supermarket rye bread and you just threw it in a you know a, a glass of Coke. You just kind of stuffed your bread in a glass of Coke and and, and it got all soggy on you. That's kind of what I'm smelling here. Except you know you also put some vodka or maybe some Everclear or something in there along with it. Um. I still like it better than the Claren on the nose, um, but my I am not uh, enthused to try this. Just not doing very much. It feels like Coke that's been alcoholized. That's kind of all I'm getting. Um, the rye character is not doing enough to sort of punch through um, through that. It's just kind of like, you know, cre cream of wheat except, you know, with Coke and alcohol. Um, and that's not my favorite thing in the world. If you, if you, just, if you threw some other stuff into this, you know, again, lime, a lot of these so far feels like they, feels like they could... Um, sorry, back up. Um, many of these so far feel like they could um, uh, benefit from some kind of addition to the to long drink, to the cocktail, to make it work a little bit better. Um, that's That might become a common theme as we run through this, but certainly the, th the theme here. This is kind of boozy and, again, cloyingly sweet 
without something else in there to balance it off. Let me get this one more shot. And in that genre, um, the, the, uh, the Hamilton is still winning. Um, ooh. Okay, let's try uh, our wild turkey. All right, wild turkey 101 rye and Coke. So that's this glass. Better, actually. Um, the rye is actually bringing a very pleasant fruitiness um, to, to the table. Um, so I'm getting lime again. Uh, the, the cola notes and the vanilla are certainly there. You know, I'm going to keep saying that because it's Coke. Um, this was a very nice um, kind of orange zest thing going on. Um, let's feel some orange pulp. Uh, not bad. I mean, this, this, there's not a whole lot of spiciness going on. Maybe, maybe like one little grain of, of black, of white pepper in there. That's about all the spiciness you're getting from this, but I'm enjoying the fruity factor. There's a little, there's a little floral action too on the palate. Oh God, I can smell the baijo from here. Jesus, I'm terrified. Um, okay, back to oof. Okay, so the promise that was that was kind of showing up in the nose is not delivering for me on the palate. Let me try this one more time. Okay, so there's there's some fruitiness there, maybe more so. There's like a we're throwing like a twist of, of orange peel um, into our, you know, boozy Coke, but it still tastes like boozy, grainy Coke. That's kind of all I'm getting. Um, this is kind of on a par with the OGD for me. Um, uh, maybe a touch less hot in the nose, but it's also, uh, um, I don't, I don't like the, any of these very much. Um, in this, in this sort of, again, in this genre of needs sour to balance it off, uh, the Hamilton is clearly winning because it's bringing more than just, you know, kind of booze and kind of vague grainy sweetness. All right, so that was disappointing. Um, <laughs> whiskey, you gotta up your Coke pairing game, honestly. All right, now comes the scary one. By Joe and Coke. Um, <sighs> All right. Um, you know, if, if you see me die on camera, you know, call the police. I guess I can't upload this video if I die on camera. Um, well, you know, we are uh, getting on with uh, a second Cold War with China potentially. So maybe this, if this combination works, you know, maybe, maybe that can all be averted and we can live in peace. Let's see. Um, on the nose, by Joan Coke. Hello. Um, <laughs> this is, um, hold on. Um, <laughs> it smells like I've actually got something here. Hang on. Okay. So you have to like, you have to, again, not hate by Joe. Um, and you have to not really not hate, you know, uh, anise. There is a ton of anise on this nose. There's the, the, the stinky cheese stuff is not really coming through the, those sort of, but I am getting a, just a, 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 a crap ton of anise, uh, wrapping around those traditional cookie notes, the vanilla, the cola, a little bit of sour. Um, there's a little bit of a bright, almost, um, what the heck is that? It's, it's orange again, like the, uh, oh, what was it? Like the, um. One of these things that I can't remember which was was doing, but it's more like uh, funky, slightly rotting orange. You know, behind your wall of anise. This is really nice, actually. This is a great nose. It's not it doesn't have a whole lot of depth going on, but um, for two ingredient cocktail um, or a long drink or whatever this is, yeah, that really works um, on the palate. Here we go.
we might have a winner. Um, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, we might have a winner. That is delightful. Um, Jesus, holy crap. Again, you gotta like your anise, your black licorice, your fennel, that kind of thing. So take fennel, you know, take your, take some vanilla and the cola notes, so Coke. Um, uh, take all that together, you know, spritz some, some slightly, uh, you know, rotting orange. It take, t tastes a lot like it smells, actually. It, everything kind of follows from the nose. But the development on this is is beautiful. It's um it's very sweet, but the sort of herbaceous um, uh, anise like character of the baijiu and the slight hint of funky citrus in there just balances off that that sweetness beautifully. Holy crap! God damn. Um, wow. Uh, so, uh, it is not the most complicated drink in the world, but it is absolutely delicious and refreshing. I mean, the, the herbaceousness of this is, is really refreshing to drink. Um, so, so, I mean, let me make a demand right now. Um, before I even finish this tasting, cause, um, I really have hopes that for the Applejack and the, um, the Applejack more, more so than the Sacred Bond, but I think the Sacred Bond was, is going to show well. Um, if you have any kind of control over a drinks menu, you need to try this. You need to try, you know, these two. You know, pure, Coke, Baijiu. Coke, Luzo Lao cheap Luzo Lao Zhao. Do what you got to do. Um, hunt down a distributor. Um, you know, hire a guy who speaks Mandarin if you gotta. Do what you gotta do to get like a case of this stuff and put it on a menu for the summer. It will get you laughed at. You have to understand. But th this has p serious potential. Wow. I'm drinking this, Jesus. I have to pick up my, my kid from daycare in like an hour. Um, that's terrific. It's it, it it's just terrific, uh, and if 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 that is the best drink in this whole lineup, I will be a happy man. Um, goddamn. All right, moving on. All right, Brandy's got to step up. Uh, all right, so we, we got our um, what? Uh, sacred bond. No wait. This one's a sacred bond. Uh, glass seven. No, glass eight. Last eight, sorry. Uh, it's been a day. Um, so this isn't a death seat after the Baijo, but <laughs> after the Baijo and Coke. But we'll see what it's got. Actually, quite nice. Um, it does smell sweet. You gotta, you gotta get past that. It smells like it's gonna be sweet. Um, but the, there's different kinds of the the grapiness of the brandy. And, you know, the cokiness of the coke are really playing into each other very nicely here. Um, it's not boozy at all, like a, lot of, like a lot of the whiskeys were. The alcohol is very well controlled. Um, let's take some very ripe red grapes um, and uh, uh, sort of throw them in with, with some uh, vanilla essence and like a, a couple of little... little those little cola candies and like the little um, bottle shaped ones. Uh, maybe like a little, um, where you're, well, okay. There's a little bit of a floral note here too. So just throw some wildflowers in, um, maybe some grass too. And that's kind of what this smells like. And it's, it's lovely. I, I like this. It's a very, again, kind of a simple nose, but it's good. Interesting. Give me a second. Um, what do I want to say about this? Uh, 
it works, but it works as the base for something else, if that makes sense. Um, what you're getting here is a kind of synergy between two things that work together really well, but it feels like it needs more of a direction. So, but it, it does not exactly sour. This doesn't feel like it's, it's, it's lacking sour in the same way as the others. This just feels like something like a strong foundation upon which you could build, you know, half a dozen really good long drinks. Um, so we're getting kind of, kind of falling from the nose again. Grapey, grapiness, um, a little caramel, not too much. Brown sugar, I hate brown sugar as a tasting note, but it's very obvious here. Um, and then you got Coke, you got, you got your vanilla and you got your cola. Um, and it's simple, and, but you could throw like some stuff in here for aromatics. You can throw, oh, I don't know, you could probably throw some, some, some kind of uh, orange liqueur in here, have lots of fun with that. This just feels like something you could play with. So uh, get yourself some Sacred Bond and some cola and play with, uh, you know, find the next hot summer drink that is not Baijiu based because this is gonna murder if it gets out there. Um, all right, and our last official contestant uh, is the, wait, switch bottles. Laird's and Coke. On the nose, it smells kind of like you'd expect it. It smells like apples and Coke, but it works. It works really well, actually. Um, so I like this more than the Sacred Bond. The, the, the Sacred Bond feels like it's a very solid foundation. It just needs more. This has got kind of got more going on already. So you got, again, alcohol is under control. Um, the appleness is just playing really beautifully with the, with the cokiness again. Yeah, uh, sort of uh, candied apples meets um, shot of like really good classic Normandy cider, um, like slightly sour cider, um, and uh, and then and then you have those cokey notes. Um, what I like about this is the Laird's on its own. I I need to do a review of it, obviously, but it's a little bit hairy on its own. It has it, it's. Uh, but here, like the, the, the slightly rough notes that you get in young apple spirit are just, they just kind of disappear. They don't matter that much because the Coke is covering them over. On the palate, oh, that's good. Yeah, that's really good. Um, could still use a squirt of lime juice Kind of like we're kind of going back to the theme with the Hamilton here, but um, the apple brandy and the Coke are playing very well, very well together. Kind of, you know, kind of performs as you'd expect, but um, like the, the flavors I could tell you right now are exactly what you th would expect them to be, honestly. But they're showing up quite well. This is a good combination. This is a really good combination. It's it's still not topping the Baijiu. The Baijiu is still winning. God help us. Um, uh, but uh, oh, and we're out of con official contestants, so I guess that's it. Um, oh, uh, but now we're gonna we're gonna do our bonus because I've had a long hard day, and damn it, I deserve some tequila and coke. All right, I'm gonna cleanse my palate before this. On the nose, it actually works. It does work actually. Um, so the herbaceous, uh, grassy, f um, wildflowery character of the of the tequila of the the uh, tapatio is actually cutting through the coke very nicely. So it's it's more of a green style of blank and coke than any of the rest of these, which I appreciate as a fan of vegetables. This, you know, 
I, I really, I really, you know, enjoy as, as if I were the little kid inside of me really enjoys like just double fisting celery on Coca-Cola. And this is kind of what I'm getting from that. On the palate. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. Amazingly, it does work. Um, I don't think it was, this would work with the, sort of those more earthy. Uh, I wouldn't use this with, with use, use this combination with lowland tequila and expect a better combination. <clears throat> but with this slightly herbal green style of Highland tequila, this actually works pretty well. Um, again, uh, it's, it's herbaceousness, celery, a um, little asparagus in there. All just wrapped up and kind of elevated in this, you know, um, blanket of Coke. And it works really, really well. Um, this would be ranking high if, if it were officially in, in contention, but it is not. So I will just uh, leave it to you to experiment on your own. Let me try this one more time. Yeah, it's quite good. Basically, a, a whole, at least half of this lineup, if I was served... Any of these, uh, when, I, when I was at someone's home, I would be very pleased with, uh, with what I was drinking. Um, not so much a couple of the others, but we'll get to those. Okay, rankings. Um, I'm going to rank these. All right, so let me try the Claren again, because I think this is going to go last. Oof. Um, Mr. Duquesne. Mm -mm. Um, ooh. okay, so let's establish our, our bottom ones. Oh, that, ooh. okay. So in last place, which kind of breaks my heart a little bit, um, is the Claren and Coke. Um, I highly recommend not trying this combination. Uh, this is a lovely product. Um, they seem like great people, but don't mix their their rum, their Saint Benevolence Claren with Coke. It is, uh, you know, you know, olives and the sort of wildflower. Uh, olives and Coke do not get to well get on well together. Um, uh, in, I'm gonna say tied uh, for second to last place are. You know, your your wild turkey and your old granddad 114. Um, these were not bringing a whole lot. To, like the, the wild turkey was slightly more promising on the nose, but on the palate, on the palate, like it's it's pretty much a wash with the with 114. Um, these both just taste like kind of grainy, alcoholy Coke. Um, and that's, you know, not really what I'm going for here. It isn't neither one is is uh, particularly refreshing. And I don't really want to drink them. Um, I actually hold on. Let me double check this. Mm -hmm. This is going to be heresy. I actually liked the Jepson's bourbon. It's the Dickel at 107 proof uh, more than I liked uh, either of these two. And I think it was because it had this. It has that minerally you know uh, fruity minerally flintstones vitamin note that actually cuts through the coke element um unlike these two where just where they just get buried uh, so that there's only booze left uh so this comes in fourth or what is this fifth place i guess i still don't really like it no though I, I i would love it to have more character and a little bit a little bit more sour. Um, okay, let's move on to the ones I actually kind of liked. Um, so, Sacred Bond. Mm -hmm. mm. 
okay, in my brain, I kind of had the Sacred Bond and the Hamilton on par, and that was incorrect. Um, uh, this comes in fourth place. Um, the Sacred Bond and this feels like, again, something you'd build better drinks off of. Um, it is not, it feels like kind of the heaviness you feel before a, a, a storm. There's a lot there, it just hasn't happened yet. So you need to, you, you know, the mixologists of the world need to throw stuff in to make more, make it happen. Um, moving on. Oh, Jesus, I've been at this almost an hour. Um, uh, <clears throat> oh, wait. Do I like the Lairds or the Hamilton better? Let's see. Mm -mm. Okay, in, th what is this, third place, right? No, fourth place. Um, I have got the sort of traditional molasses-based rum and coke. Hamilton 114, um, navy strength. This is a very nice combination. It just needs a little bit more sour, a little squirt of lime in there um, to give it a little more brightness, a little more lift. And uh, then you got a terrific cocktail there. Even on its own, it's pretty. It's actually pretty pleasant, pleasant to drink. And since I've been letting it sit, the uh, the, the worthy park has started to crawl through a little bit more, uh, which I enjoy very much. Mm. Yeah, but uh, it is going to lose to glass number nine, which is my Laird's apple brandy. Um, this is a lovely combination. The apple and the, uh, the Coke really play off well together. Yeah, just not quite as well as, um, the rum agricole and Coke, um, which is right here. Oh yeah, the nose on this is priceless. It is so limey. God, that's a good combination. Throw this over ice, you know, put a little umbrella stick thing in it. I could drink this all day. That is a very good combination. Um, but the winner, which is um, not what I had in mind, but you know, that's what happens, uh, is by Joe and Coke. Um, Luso Lao Jiao, Air Crew, what is this? Um, Ercoju. It it's just terrific. Um, can you see me back there? God, I mean the the nose on this is priceless. You would never even pick up that that um, that Coke was the was the part of the base in this unless you sort of were told beforehand. Because the Baijo is just entering into it and playing with it and 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 changing it so much. Um, it's just got the right common, like a bunch of these feel like you could play around with how strong they are, like particularly some of the whiskeys. Um, this one feels dead on, two to one by Joe um, and, and Coke. Uh, God, that is lovely. I'm as surprised as you are. Um, hunt this down. <laughs> Try it out. Uh, it is it is worth the, your effort, and um, it wins this competition. The uh, the little tapatio and coke is is also quite good. Um, I don't know. That's that's kind of all I got. Thanks for watching. Thanks for uh, um, letting me entertain you on on my moving day. And I hope you learned something. I don't know what the th that thing would be. Maybe that that Baijo is is a cocktail long drink style thing now. Somehow. Um, anyways, thanks for watching and uh, cheers. I have to hit that stop button somehow.